don't make themselves work. Only constant efforts produce results. My comment, I think this is understandable that uh, once a relationship begins, just like Prabhupada would say, uh, initiation makes means beginning. For example, when we get initiated, we think, wow, I'm initiated. Wow, now that, you know, that's it. I did it. I'm in. No, Prabhupada said initiation means beginning. Prior to initiation, one is aspiring to begin. The one is preparing to begin, preparing themselves to begin that relationship with Krishna that has been, we say, interrupted due to the association of another relationship that we develop, and that is our relationship with the material energy. So when we get initiated, it means now I'm on the right path to make that relationship again perfect, successful. But that means there's work to be done. And this is sometimes a wrong mindset that individuals fall into that, oh, I'm initiated. That means, yeah, I did the work, I'm in, I joined the club. No, it's not like that. It's, we have to now develop that relationship through the process of bhakti as it's given to us. Maharaj goes on to say, now we'll talk about communication. This age we are not as known as Kali Yuga, it's the age of quarrel. Don't be swayed by modern advice trends. While argument is said to be a form of communication, it is actually the opposite, a sign of deterioration and disruption. So um, Maharaj is making that argument is not communication. It's deterioration and disruption. And he goes on to say, my experience, people in general are, are poor communicators. Either they don't know the art, or they don't bother to learn the art, or they don't have the courage to communicate. They freeze up and communications come to a standstill. But communication is the science of knowing how to speak and how to hear. Both hearing and speaking need to be proactive, open, constructive, and most of all, emphatic. Communication is not an occasional ingredient that we indulge in when things are go wrong. No, it's an integral part of our relationship from day to day. Mm -hmm. In other words, in relationships, we take things for granted. And then, although there is some need for communication, we don't recognize it. Or we communicate simply in one way, and that way is just one way. In other words, we this is my comments. Um, for instance, when we have children, we just our communication is always to tell them what to do, <laughs> or to correct them from doing the wrong thing. But that's one-sided. There's another part of that communication which is important in order to build a relationship. We can't assume that the relationship is there simply because they're my children. It has to be uh, nourished through proper communication. Okay, then Maharaj goes on. Parents need to regularly sit with their offspring and openly inquire and share to show empathy for their situation, for the, the offspring, to understand their experiences, their daily struggles. Communication is the hallmark of a quality relationship. And then he says, the final one, he says, unreasonable or false expectations. 
I guess this might ring true with a lot of us. None of us is perfect, but often we have ideals, idolized expectations of others or from a relationship. In other words, in that relationship, there is expectations. And sometimes they're unreasonable or false. Mm -hmm. He says, my own experience, I saw my father as a real example of someone who accepted people for simply for what and who they were. He always encouraged me to improve and grow, but at the same time he accepted me for what I was and didn't try to turn me into something or something else, into someone or to something else. We can help each other grow, but we should never try to change the other person, only help them become more of themselves. Hmm. There are many books available today on the topics that we have mentioned. Unfortunately, few include self-awareness or self-realization as the essential purpose of the goal of relationships. Yeah, they always talk about the ingredients for communication, but they don't reflect back on the individual. This is my comment. Uh, by constantly taking inventory in our own uh, consciousness, both how we express ourselves outward to others and how we develop our relationship on the spiritual level, and then then the, the, the essential purpose of our goal of relationships develop uh, organically. Now back to Maharaj. But if you don't know who you are, then even if relationships work, they don't bear lifetime fruit of results, self-relationship, self-awakening. And if self-realization is not a key component or goal of any relationship, then at the end of the day, what do you give each other that had already have at lasting value? So what can you give to each other if you're actually not moving in the spiritual? So favorite relationships help keep our minds on self-awakening or self-realization. A healthy spiritual life means healthy relationships. That's the conclusion of the article. Mm -hmm. So everything really we do, the quality of our life depends on the type of relationships we have and the quality that we have in that relationship. From the, the absolute point of view, as devotees, we're trying to develop a relationship with Krishna. But I've seen and I've had personal experience with people who have had relationships with others who were very fixed in their Krishna consciousness, but they couldn't relate to others. They had that problem. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. <clears throat> um, there was one lady, she came to me for advice. She married this young man. They were just married a few years ago. And uh, <clears throat> this was, this happened many years ago, but their marriage had been going on for a couple of years. And the wife was in distress. <clears throat> she came to me and she said, you know, my husband, he spends most of his time throughout the day reading Chaitanya Charitamrita and studying Srila Prabhupada's books. He doesn't give me hardly any time. <clears throat> and he expects from me food, prasadam, and washing his clothes and taking care of all of his personal needs. And he is simply absorbed in his practice of Krishna consciousness. I can't really communicate with him <clears throat> because he considers this his life and me as just part of helping him become more 
and using more time. <laughs> so I basically said <clears throat> that young man should have never gotten married because he wasn't prepared for a relationship, <clears throat> nor he knew what it meant to get into a marriage relationship. I didn't take away from his spiritual uh, acumen, but at the same time, he wasn't meant for that ashram. <clears throat> So uh, my advice was, what could I give her? I could say, you know, call attention to his shortcomings in the relationship and try to work it out. Uh, about a year later, I met her again and she said, we are no longer married. So the boy wasn't ready to change. Well, the relationship fell apart. So he caused this other personality, another living entity to go through a lot of distress because he wanted to use that relationship for his own personal gain. That's not a relationship. <laughs> That's more like slavery. <laughs> so relationships are two way. It's give and take from both sides. The problem is sometimes we don't know how to give, but we're expert at taking. Or there's some people who only know how to give, but don't know how to receive either. And that doesn't work either, because after a while, the quality of what they give goes down, because receiving is part of giving. It's like, we can give to others the quality of our spiritual uh, presence, our spiritual energy that we carry when we fortify our consciousness with hearing and chanting and reading Srila Prabhupada's books. When we do that, then we have something to give to others. So it's not about only about ourselves. It extends itself out. And, of course, the ultimate relationship is with Krishna. And as we build that in a proper way, there's a wrong way to build that. Or there is a way that is, not, that is incomplete. And if it does, we don't really know how to have relationships with others in a qualitative way. There's others that don't, that simply want to have relationships on the material level and invest a lot of time and energy in doing that. But they don't have time or don't want to give time to build their spiritual relationship up. And therefore, their relationships on the material level turn into a more selfish type of relationship where it's more or less an it becomes a need for that person rather than a service to others because relationships also fall into the platform of how do we serve the other person in that relationship? What can uh, I give to build this relationship and give something to that other person that will make them stronger in their own life and at the same time increase the quality of our relationship. The relationships are the basis. So I heard one very senior devotee and he's been making this statement quite regularly in many public appearances and he's also speak, spoken to people in high places in government, in, in medical industries, in financial industries, in other areas. He's quite prominent in these areas. And he said, we have a tendency to love things and use people. But we should be more considered, concerned about loving people and using things. Things can't develop a relationship with us. We use them just like we use our car, we use our computer, we use our house, 
but we fall in love with these things and we make that, those things the support of our needs. I have to have the material things. And people are indispensable. You know, I can go from relationship to relationship because there's so many things I can do. And so we have a tendency to see what we can get in the relationship rather than see what we can develop in a mutual reciprocation in that relationship. Or sometimes we see there are people who are pretentious and they do this with women a lot. They want to take advantage of women. So what they do, they know that the female gender has a tendency to receive people when they are treated nicely. You treat women very carefully, considerably, lovingly, nicely. And then they develop a relationship. And then once that relationship gets in and there's trust coming from the woman's side, then that man will exploit that woman in any in different ways. So it's kind of a tactic that men use in order to get the confidence and the trust of women. And it's a form of cheating, it's a form of exploitation because it's motivated by personal interests and the, the, the objective to exploit. So this is Kali Yuga because of the age People are very uh, self-centered and mo not aware of the needs of others, but always aware of their own, not needs, but their own desires, whether, whatever they may be, either acceptable or unacceptable. But that can be these relationships that we have in this material world with others or even within the society of devotees with others um, can be strengthened when we understand what is the pro what is the mood of relationship. And you can't develop a relationship with Krishna in the wrong way. There's only one way to develop a relationship with Krishna, and that's through genuine love, which comes by, by serving Krishna in that mood of devotion. That's to how the relationship develops. Of course, there are people who have relationships with God, and they, but it's not really a relationship. They simply want to get something from God. And so they pray and they do all kinds of austerities in order to get something. But that there is no relationship with God. It's relationship with God's energies. And they may achieve some of the desires they want through the energy, but they never develop in their relationship with the source of the energy, Krishna himself. Because Krishna says, Bhakti Mamavajananti, only by devotion can I be known. He said, only those who approach me with devotion do I reciprocate in the same way. Of course, you can approach Krishna in so many different ways, but you will get exactly what you approach him for. Or you may not even get that. But he's reciprocal even on the material level, but that is not the position of a God to give us something material. Although people practice spirituality in order to uh, fortify and strengthen and to... Uh, uh, gain more things in their material life. But material things can't bring happiness. Just like we can't love our computer, we can't love our house, we can't love our car, we can't love our, our garden, we can't love anything that's inanimate. We can only love uh, living entities who can reciprocate that love. Just like, can you love animals? No, because that is not a, um, there's no reciprocation of relationship on that. The animal has a whole different concept of that relationship. 
but you can take care of animals and that's what humans are meant to do to, to provide for animals so they can live their animal life in the best possible way and, or not to interfere with their life by trying to control the animals but uh, it, it's mentioned you can't have rasa with other than other than other living entities who are sentient or who are not sentient but who are of the same nature in other words humans can go with humans humans can't go with animals and that's mentioned in the i believe it's in either in the krishna book or nectar devotion i think it's in nectar devotion okay this is a little bit about relationships that i thought we just spark a little conversation because it's so important that we understand how to, you know, increase the quality of our relationships or build a relationship that needs to be built. <laughs> and again, lack of communication, complacency, and unreasonable or false expectations are the three things that destroy or cause the relationship not to develop okay we can open it up for questions thank you so much guru maharaj for a wonderful talk on uh, relationships i always felt it's very important and uh, it's really really discuss a good discussion hopefully we'll have good questions as well devotees if you have any questions comments realizations please unmute yourself and uh, or either you can type in the chat box thank you guru maharaj takes up my humble obeisances all glories to shila prabhu pad all glories to your holiness Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful topic, Guru Maharaj. It is so important and so needed for our spiritual life, for even just our material life. And Mother Krishna Nandini comes to mind as you are speaking this. She worked so hard, so tirelessly, so energetically, simply for us to have healthy, loving relationships with each other. I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Yeah, she was... Uh something that she focused on relationships and she was you know built a beautiful family with so many wonderful devotees and uh, yeah i had many personal experiences that were very memorable and how she was always very caring, loving, and available. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, this is relationship is, is so key to our spiritual life. Uh, and both in our material dealings and our spiritual relationship with Krishna and the devotees. So thank you very much for bringing this topic. Maharaj, I have a question in a sense that we have to be the attitude uh, we have to adopt when serving the devotees, when dealing with the devotees is how can I serve them? How best can I serve them without any return in expectation? But my mind always kind of dwells on, on, on things like, am I being misused? Am I being abused in that service or in that relationship? When I say abused, meaning always giving, giving, but nothing, no reciprocation. And then it becomes very difficult to develop that relationship or continue with that existing relationship. So how do I uh, best approach uh, those thoughts, Maharaj? Thank you. Yeah, you find yourself just giving 
of course, again, there should be reciprocation, but then again, unreasonable expectations from your side are not necessarily reciprocations. So you have to see, okay, so I'm trying to serve this person. What do I expect from it? Just a thank you or that they're accepting what I'm giving and using it and growing from it. Is that good enough for me? Or do I want to get something back from them by serving them? Maybe not immediately, but um, I've met people who are like that. They just spend their time trying to serve others. But I think what we need to do is keep ourselves strong in our own spiritual life and that we're not affected by what comes or doesn't come. If you find that the person that you're giving to is not appreciating it or not using it or is averse to it, then better not to continue in that relationship because it's like pouring ghee on ashes. You have to pour ghee on some fire in order for it to blaze. But ashes are just, if you pour ghee on ashes, all you get is a pile of wet ashes, that's all. And you waste the ghee. So we have to see, we have to just like, well, there is, when, you, when it comes, it depends on the nature of that uh, object you're offering. Some people or some individuals, just like little children, may not be able to reciprocate what we give. They're just in the mood of taking. And uh, if it's part of our family, we can accept that. And that's what we feel is our duty and should do. And we're happy doing that. But when you're dealing with adults, you expect more something to give you an indication that what you're doing is being received. And so you have to measure the relationship as it, as it goes on and see what you're giving, how it's being received, how it's being used, is it being appreciated like that. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. There's, there's other people like, sometimes you find people like to give donations, but they, they want to keep themselves anonymous. Anonymous contribution to a, a project. It might be even a big donation. Um, because they don't really want to be glorified for the activities that they've done. And that's quite selfless many times. So there's many facets to the to the reciprocation or non-reciprocation of a relationship. But you have to see or experience whether you're actually feeling the enthusiasm to continue to give or something is blocking that enthusiasm, then you have to see what it is. Or there's some expectation that is either genuine or false. In a marriage, expect there is expectations upon each other because if it's one-sided, like I gave that uh, example of that one lady, then the relationship will, no, doesn't, doesn't develop. You have to see what is the nature of that relationship. Mm -hmm. If you go to work and your only relationship you have with your boss is the paycheck he gives you, you might think, well, I'll get another job because he doesn't really appreciate me at all as a, as a worker or someone who is trying to help. Mm -hmm. 
And you see, even now companies are starting to see talk about the personal aspect of relationships as opposed to simply the work work quality as the as the barometer to make the the work go on. <laughs> Is one devotee, he talks about it all the time. He says, um, if you, by serving the devotees and giving, helping them achieve whatever they need, they're inspired to do something in their, in their Krishna consciousness. But you can see the results or non-results by giving it a try, testing it out and see how that goes. But then again, you ask yourself a question, what do I expect from this? I think this is very key, Maharaj, and thank you for that, because if you have the expectation set, then you know if that person is reciprocating the if your expectation is of reciprocation and if it doesn't come, then we have an issue. But if there's an expectation of little or no reciprocation, but you still want to serve and then the reciprocation doesn't come, then you are at peace because there was no expectation. So I think that's the right. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, relationships are very complex. There's many, many uh, components to it. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Raj Prabhu. Uh, I think you have a question. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I would like to introduce Raj Prabhu to you. Uh, I, he's from Iskon South London Temple. And uh, it's been a year back. I think he started joining your classes. And uh, after starting your classes, he started doing 16 rounds. And uh, he's also reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So I just wanted to inform you that uh, he has very been inspired by your classes, Guru Maharaj. Raj Prabhu, you can ask your question. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, uh, all right. uh, I, I like very much what you've been talking about. But my question was around, we don't always choose all the relationships that we're in. So there's sometimes it's family related or work related and often we, in those circles, we have people that are very much in the modes of ignorance and passion. Uh, and when we come in contact with them, we, we often find that they take an interest in what we're interested in, like Krishna consciousness. So it's nice and we feel compassionate towards them because we see them in anxiety, etc. So we try and help and explain, but not push too hard. But the problem I find sometimes is over time, because they are still so much in those modes of ignorance and passion, it, it has an impact on our own mind. And we may start things that we might start doing little things that we wouldn't otherwise do that we don't want to go down, a road that we don't want to go down. Well, you know, you can only, they say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And so again, knowing how much they can receive. And if you, and then you, you know, if you see some sign of growth in the right direction, you're inspired to continue, even though it may be small. But if you don't see anything, then you think, why should I continue to try to build something that's not, that's not going anymore? So yeah, yeah, sometimes we have to pull out of relationships or to uh, change the nature of that relationship and make it less intimate or less less uh, responsible from each side. 
That that's true, mostly from family members. Mm. The problem I have, Maharaj, is uh, I, I see that they're making progress. So you want to continue to give, but sometimes I see that their their negative mindset also has an impression on me. Their modes of goodness and passion mindset has an impression on me. Yeah, yeah, you, well, it, you have to see, you know, you're, you might be not able to handle what's, what is being responsible. You, you just, one or two things, either you can back off or you can st strengthen yourself in your own Krishna consciousness where you can withstand what is coming back that is apparently negative for if that's the, if you want to keep that relationship, mm. it's very subtle. So they always they say nice words, etc., but it happens on a very subtle level. Yeah, perhaps your expectations are too much. Mm. I'm not saying it is, but look at that area and see. It's like we preach, and sometimes we, you know, we we spend a lot of time preaching, and and nothing develops in that area. But still, we continue to preach, but we try to look for where that, where what we're about, what we have to give, is more is, is going to be received and accepted. If there's some change in the right direction, then it's worth pursuing. But these subtle things that come back to you that are somewhat unpleasant, you might have to deal with them and just push them aside and tolerate them. Mm. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, Hare Krishna. I hope that helps. Yes, yes, I think it does. Thank you. Yeah, just you know, review what 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 we just talked about, and see if you can gain grasp something that you can hold on to. Mm. Yes, uh, I think Raj Prabhu, uh, it answered. Yeah, Vivek Prabhu, you have a question. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, my question is that while I am going through this journey of uh, Krishna consciousness in last few years, I feel my relationship inclination is uh, moving more towards uh, serving uh, devotees and like whom I am like uh, uh, spending more time with and uh, taking care of these devotees while like from family member side who are mostly in India, I feel like it's like shifting from that to like devotees and even while I am talking to my relatives. Like most of the time, I just want to pass at least some Krishna message in that discussion because uh, I'm not saying that they are not in Krishna, like uh, God consciousness, might not be exactly in Krishna consciousness, but they're pious. Point, so I feel like after this today's discussion, that am I doing something wrong here, like in terms of uh, relationship perspective? I don't know. <laughs> what. What is your feeling? I don't know. You have to tell me what you're experiencing. My feeling, Guru Maharaj, is that I personally, like, uh, yes, like, initially I used to spend a lot of time in material discussions a few years back. While I, like, don't want to really spend that time, maybe just, like, some know-how and some taking care of, like, basic things, like understanding and everything. So it's not, like, very rough and dry relationship. 
but i want to really discuss and i feel like they are also happy like they many times i ask i hope i am not boring you or i am not just giving you this like oh yeah 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 i see what you're saying now yeah all right you want to go a little bit farther and they're not so much interested they are guru maharaj it's not that they are not really like uh, so far like nobody feels that okay why i am calling them they all are really like waiting still waiting for calls and they feel like at least through this we get uh, some understanding uh, and uh, like at least you are giving continuously trying to pass some information which we were not really uh, initially uh, receiving very positively or uh, not positively but like very uh, like anxiously like waiting for that but now we at least get some message but my like thinking the question is more that discussion is more in this now krishna and like they discuss they get something they do some rounds they read something at least they so am i doing really like i like after today session i'm really thinking that am i really doing something like uh, wrong oh, are, you, are you seeing some progress yes like few have started chanting few have started keep taking hey, care of fasting that, on ekadashi no great that's 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 progress if somebody begins chanting that's a That's a great milestone. That means they're on their way back to Godhead now. Yeah, so that's not something small. That's a big. That's a great. Anyone who begins chanting, you know, then you have to say that my investment was, you know, brought about great amounts of reciprocation. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's obvious. Anyone who begins chanting, even fasting to some degree, helps them become a little detached. Detachment leads to uh, openness towards something spiritual. It's not necessarily spiritual to fast. In fact, fasting is not spiritual, but it is supportive. It can be supportive when when done in the right. Way and at the right time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but especially chanting that is always beneficial. But I don't think you have a problem. <laughs> I think you just need to keep going. <laughs> That's all I can see from what I from what I hear from you. Or I, I maybe there's another element you you were thinking. Well, I'm using this much time for these people, and that means I use less time for something else. Am I wasting my time? No, like Guru Maharaj, I think uh, it's like more like I was thinking as I was saying earlier that like while I was discussing more and more in terms of materially and like normally. people who are not in very deep krishna consciousness if you talk materially they feel very happy yeah, i am taking care of and discussing more and more deeper while you start talking about krishna consciousness and like these concepts uh, of course like uh, there is a balance like which we have to do really in terms of material versus spiritual kind of discussions uh, and passing that message so i i think what you told me it's very reassuring that uh, might be there might be some compromise here on uh, material discussions but if people are moving and taking some steps then i think it's better we should not think too yeah. much we do that also we make some uh, you know entrance using you know general statements of that maybe sound material that helps to build a relationship just like you know inquiring about how a, how a person is that although it's kind of perfunctory and it's sometimes done just out of automatic pilot when it's done in a conscious way it has an effect you know you ask well how are you how are you feeling that's the, that that goes a long way yes thank you guru maharaj thank you 
हरे कृष्ण गुरु महाराज Uh, Guru Maharaj, if you don't mind, I have a particular observation that I made, and I would really appreciate your uh, guidance and instructions. I've often seen that even in devotional circles, unless one has the really, really mindset, like say Mother Krishna Nandini or someone who's really worked on themselves and sees everyone as spirit soul, we find a lot of leaders look to people as a pair of hands. you know come on do this service come on do that service you're just a pair of hands recruited to do service here there everywhere there's no attempt to build a relationship with you there's no attempt to find out how you're doing there's no attempt to nourish your spiritual life it's all about getting the job done and uh, i'm just wondering how long we can go on like that because i see that so often well then you know stay away from that kind of leadership <laughs> if you're speaking in general that's one thing but if you're speaking specifically just stay away from it so that you know if you feel like you're being used simply to get things done and there's no personal concern about you as an individual then you don't want that relationship but if you're concerned that it's happening in our society as a general thing it, it is and what to do sometimes there's a reason behind it and you can't see the reason for instance a lot of leaders have, are overworked with projects and responsibilities and therefore they take less time for others and there's those who have more time and take more time we need emotionally healthy people guru maharaj as well as spiritually healthy people as leaders if they don't have emotional intelligence if they are not able to handle especially tender young bhaktas and bhaktins we can drive off so many people away from our movement the way we are going yeah but there's different ways of doing that not that every leader has to have you know uh, take the emotional concern of each and every person they lead it's not possible you know they can't do it it's just not even practical so sometimes you put a system in place where the system takes up that uh service of helping people who work underneath that leader <laughs> and they work through the system and they get everything they need although the that person who is in charge may not have personal relationships so much if you're getting something from the system that they put in place it's like getting something from them it's the same thing oh yes but the person who is you know at peace with themselves and they are able to handle their self aware they understand their own motivations and they are able to clarify expectations they are able to communicate well they are able to inspire other people nicely and keep a project going well uh, on the other hand people who are <laughs> doing things out of a need to control and dominate and subjugate it doesn't okay last. well yeah that that's not krishna consciousness that's obvious that's obvious it's not krishna conscious a leader has to make sure that whoever is in he's he's responsible to take care of her getting what they need whether he does it directly or indirectly he's doing it <laughs> if he's not doing it then he's not taking on the responsibility or he's taking on more responsibility than he can handle and things are falling through mm -hmm. or he's not meant to lead in that particular way he may lead in another way yes 
Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the clarification. I mean, you just look at the evolution of our society, how Prabhupada was there at the beginning. I mean, everybody had personal association with Prabhupada. But as time went on, as the society built, as Prabhupada traveled around the world, it wasn't possible that he could have, you know, after a while, he had to have some of his secretaries respond to the letters that he was getting because he just couldn't handle everything. But he was always concerned. You have to know the person before you understand why things are happening or not happening. If you look at the results without knowing the person, then you might be condemning something that is not condemnable. But yes, the point what you say, you what you say, if that is, if it is it's the absolute principle that a leader is there, but he doesn't care. He maybe only cares about his position, then he's not qualified to lead him. That's something else. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, and also try to understand the complexity of our society. <laughs> like now. What, what they've put in place now is all the leaders have to make out wills for all their assets when they leave. So that's, that's, that just started about six months ago. So the whole push, because when someone dies, you know, their assets are in this place. They got things here, something's going on here. Nobody knows really how to keep things going. So now, in order to tighten that up a little bit, every leader has to have a will. Because mm -hmm. there's so much confusion once they leave, what to do, what, whatever they were managing or whatever they were, whatever, the, whatever possessions they were controlling. Mm -hmm. And it will not only take some tangible things, but even how to take care of his disciples once they leave, once he once he leaves, how his disciples will can be able to continue on. That's part of the will. Well, that's that's more that's more of a uh, not a direct written thing, but it's something that has to be communicated before the person leaves. So we're getting into the complexity of the individual and not just seeing, well, this person doesn't care. <laughs> That's, that statement doesn't really have much, much validity. You have to look deeper into the situation before you can say that. Yes, I may be seeing things from my own lens and there's much more layers and complexities that I can perhaps not perceive at the moment. I, I can appreciate your own lens, that I can do, and there's some validity to that. But don't make that lens is the, is the, is the complete lens, it's not, it's part of it. It has some validity and there's truth to it, but it's not the whole thing. That's all. I'm just giving you a bigger, a wider perspective of your vision. That's all. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I long to see very vibrant, healthy, flourishing, loving communities with great leadership and greatly enthused, ecstatic devotees so we can attract the whole world to Krishna consciousness. That's our philosophy, but this is Kali Yuga. <laughs> So we can expect, you know, things are always going to be a little bit less than ideal. We have to work with that. Yes, but if we shoot for something bigger, then we might settle down somewhere, you know, a little less. 
Well, that's what we're, that's what our preaching is all about. That's what Prabhupada's books are all about. That's why we have all these different programs going on to, to educate people in different areas. <laughs> So it's an ongoing process. But there are individuals who are not qualified to lead, although they're in a leadership position. That That's true. Mm -hmm. Because they have a wrong understanding of what it means to lead. But I think that that number is very small. And as time goes on, it's becoming smaller, I think. I sincerely hope so, Guru Maharaj. And that's what the devotee's been saying, that it's it's fortunate that Srila Prabhupada's disciples are still on the planet, although Prabhupada has been gone for 40, 40 years, to help keep Prabhupada's you know, legacy alive. So we want to pass that legacy down to your generation. You keep it alive. Learn it and keep Prabhupada's legacy alive. Because it's not our legacy, it's Prabhupada's. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we really want to show loving, caring relationships, not just within our devotee community, but with the whole world. Everyone who comes must feel so much cared for that they think, wow, these Hare Krishnas, they really have something. We want to yeah, see that, what is it that they have. Yeah, Prabhupada said the same thing. The persons who come, they feel that there's nothing like, nothing like this Krishna consciousness anywhere. Even if they don't take to it, they experience something wonderful. Like if we keep everything clean, that's preaching. That tracks people when everything is clean and neat. That's one way, aside from the philosophy and the personal care. How are we doing on time? We are uh, 10 minutes uh, uh, now. Uh, so I guess we can, if there are no other questions, then we can stop. Are, we, are they ready for lunch? One minute, Anjali. Are they ready for lunch? Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, Anjali, we still have more time if there's more questions. That's fine, Guru Maharaj. And so devotees, if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you. So, Guru Maharaj, I would like to ask a question if there isn't any. Um, uh, yeah, I'll give you a little service. One, one minute, I, I got something going on in the background. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Somebody made a nice garland. Yesterday, please. Okay, just put it. I think it's, I mean, you might have to remove it a little, it's a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Um, thank you. So, Guru, Guru Maharaj, there was uh, something you said about uh, when you were reading it, said that we shouldn't try to change someone, but uh, we should try to make them of, more of themselves. Right. Uh, uh, so, Guru Maharaj, in this, uh, when we talk about, you know, our kids, our children in the house, and uh, like sometimes we see the behavior, like some kids turn as a very introvert kids. They don't like to, you know, talk or, you know, uh, like I see my son personally, he's turning into a very introvert person. He doesn't talk much. And he, like, he's very, very Krishna conscious. Like he does all the activities, services, whatever is asked, he will, he would do it. He would read the books and chant but uh, he doesn't open up much. So in that case, how should we deal with, uh, you know, 
uh, when he say that we shouldn't try to change uh, someone? Should we still uh, keep the things as it is or should we make some well, change? What's wrong with what he's doing? It's not doesn't sound like there's anything wrong. He's just being himself. Yes. Now, if, he, if, if he's introvert for the wrong reason because he's got he's depressed or he's disturbed, then it's a problem. But if he's Krishna conscious and he's, that's his nature, then that's fine. <coughs> okay. Yeah, maybe it's just me that I like to talk and I'm, I see him uh, just, you know, being very quiet. Like I see my husband, he's quite person. And I think my son has gone to, to my husband as well. And I just feel like they both are very quiet and calm person. So I just feel like, uh, you know, uh, it would be nice to have, you know, uh, some, <laughs> maybe, maybe just me that I expect him to talk and I just feel like he's very, you know, I Anjali, don't know. There's, there's many people like you, so don't worry, you, you will be, you can find so many people to talk to. And they're all devotees too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but, you know, you have to respect the person's nature. Living with a person after a while, you get to understand their nature. If you don't, then you really haven't taken time to develop a real relationship. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you're very gregarious. You're very outgoing, very enthusiastic, and very easily pleased but you know these that's what I see anyway and but your son I don't know your son so well but your husband seems to be very outgoing too he's not very he's not introverted yeah Guru Maharaj I managed to change him a little bit Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was very, very, he used to be very quiet, Guru Maharaj, very quiet. Um, and now he started to talk. And this why, you know, I well, fear sometimes. I, I think that's all due to the fact that he's making progress in Krishna consciousness. That is very true, Guru Maharaj. Very, very true. All, uh, you know, it's your mercy, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Well, it's all your you, blessings. You become Krishna conscious, the more you become confident to express yourself. When you're not Krishna conscious, you might develop a sense of uh, feeling uncomfortable expressing yourself because you're not sure. Yes, that is very true, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. And devotees, if you have any other questions, maybe Guru Maharaj can take one or two more. So, I don't think so. There are any other questions, Guru Maharaj? Okay, so we'll see you all tomorrow. And um, soon we'll begin a series on uh, Lord Ram's pastimes and his uh, personal qualities. Uh, Guru the... Maharaj, if I may humbly request, if you don't mind, would you please continue on this uh, relationship topic for a few more days, talking about things like conflict resolution, talking about expressing oneself. These are so important for our uh, communities, our families to grow nicely. I feel very inspired that you took up this subject. It's so important for our spiritual life, if, if you don't All mind. Right. Well, all right, then I'll just ask the general body of devotees specifically yourself to give me a particular avenue for discussion and we'll go with that uh, they can send in some and you know, they can send it into maybe Anjali and she can send me an email with a list of some of the categories that people are interested in but so far you know I'm not sure. There's nine. We had 22 people today, and 
I received questions from four. So that's about, what's the percentage? Comments and questions from four out of 22. So that's about 20%, maybe a little less than 20%. So I wanna see what kind of interest is out there in terms of this topic and then see how much we can pursue it. Okay. Uh, yes, of course, Guru Maharaj, whatever, you know, the majority of devotees want is, is uh, perfectly all right with me. It's nice because it's inspirational for my side. Otherwise, if it's just three or four people who are interested in it and everybody else is just there and Of course, Guru Maharaj, I have a lot of personal interest in it, so that's why I was asking. But whatever the majority wants is fine with me. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll see you all tomorrow. If I have internet, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there even without internet. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get it somehow. <laughs> I'm traveling right now. So um, going from place to place, we'll see what happens. Whether Krishna puts me on the on the on the net or he leaves me in the net, either way. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, Vanchikal Pataru Bhesha, Kripa Sindhu Bhevcha, Patita Nam, Pavne Bhyo, Vaishna Bhyo, Namo Nama, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for the class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the class.